you're looking to stay abreast of the latest news with Luminar Neo, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm going to show you what's new with update 1.1.1, and I'll show you a couple of ways you can use these new additional features. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and I teach beginning and intermediate photographers like you how to improve your photography, right from capture in camera, all the way through to the end of the editing process. So if you're ready to see what's new in this update, Let's get started. If you haven't already installed the update, usually Luminar prompts you when there's a new one, you can just follow the directions and install it. If you've chosen to install it later, just go to the Luminar Neo menu and check for updates. You can see that mine is currently updated. You can also click on the Luminar Neo logo and check for updates there. The two major things that are new in this update are they now allow you to duplicate a layer and you can switch easily using the brush tool from paint to erase, which is really handy. I'll show you examples of using both. If you want to see all of the bug fixes that they've included in this update, you can find that on the what's new section of their website here. Just go to skylum.com and the what's new section. I'll provide a link to this page on the video description below. You can see that there's quite a few bug fixes for both Mac and Windows. So I'm not going to go through and read them all here. I want to show you what's new. But I also want to mention that when I did the install from the update inside the program and ran it, I got a bad install and it was doing some really strange things. For example, when I used the erase tool on an unedited image, this is what I got. So I reported it as a bug to Skylum, and then I thought, I'm just gonna try a reinstall. So if you ever encounter a challenge or a problem with the program, try that first. To do this, just go to your account on the Skylum website. If you're not sure how to get to your account, open Luminar Neo, and there's a link right here. That takes you to your account, and then you could see the versions here. Just click download and get the appropriate one. For me, that's Mac with Intel. Yours may be Apple M1 or Windows. Then just follow the prompts to reinstall it. One thing I do recommend before you ever do that is to make sure that you back up your catalog. You can do that by going to the File menu, Catalog, and Backup. Make sure to save it on an external drive that is separate from where your original catalog lives. I've chosen my G-RAID 8 terabyte drive. You can see I've got one other backup. So just hit save and it will put it into this folder. If you want, you can even add the date like that. Then just click save, back it up, close the program, then go do the download and reinstall. Always make sure that you have your ducks in a row before you do any reinstallations. Okay, now assuming that we've got a good install, let me show you the new features. The first major thing that they've added is the ability to duplicate a layer. When you are in the edit module, you can right click on a layer and choose duplicate. And any edits, cropping, or anything that you've done to that layer will be duplicated exactly in the new one. To delete it, you can just right click and remove or simply hit your delete key. That's one of the things that I actually have requested that they change because hitting delete accidentally and you lose your layer and there's no undo for that. So be very careful with the delete key. The other way you can add a layer is with the keyboard hotkey shortcut D. You can see it has duplicated the layer. Now that you have the duplicate layer, let me show you a couple of things that you can do with it. One of the things that is commonly done in Photoshop is changing the blend mode, for example, to multiply. What that does is adds a bit of contrast and darkens the image. Now why might we wanna do that? Let me show you. I want to show you a quick little trick here. I'm going to also lower the highlights on this one. So it's just the second layer. Then I'm going to come back here and mask the layer using the Mask AI technology. So it's going to scan the image. You can see it working. Once it's done, I'll show you how to use it. Okay, now you can see that it's selected or found several different elements. Click on human in this case. Now the effect is only applying to him, which is the opposite of what I want, but that's okay. We can just go back here and under the mask actions, 
invert the mask. If I want to show the mask, you can see that it is indeed just on the background. So really quickly, what's happened here, if we look at the opacity, is I've darkened the background essentially by duplicating this layer. Let's see what happens if I duplicate it again. So hitting D on my keyboard, look at that. It duplicated the layer, applied the same mask and the same blend mode. Now he's looking a little bit too cut out and it's kind of looking fake. So I wanna do some additional masking and just brush work over top of him. This is where the second update comes into play. Previously, you had to click on the buttons, paint or erase to switch back and forth. And sometimes I got it wrong and I wasn't sure which one I was actually using. Now it's really clear and really easy to switch. If you look at my cursor, when I'm on the erase tool, it has a negative sign. If I switch to paint, now it has a plus sign. But there's one more thing that's even better. Just click X on your keyboard and it switches back and forth. And you can see that with the sign in the middle of the cursor. So I'm going to paint with a slightly lower strength, maybe about 40%, and just paint over him a little bit, especially around the edges, to try and get it to blend a little bit better. So he's getting darkened a tiny little bit, and it looks a little bit more realistic, especially around his hair, like that. See how getting his hair just makes it look a little bit more believable? Well, let's say I make a mistake, and I paint over his face by accident. Oops. Not a problem. Now I can just switch it to erase and erase that part out again. Super easy. If we look at the full before, you could see what the duplication of the layers has done in terms of darkening the background. Yes, you can do something similar with Relight AI and the Portrait Bokeh AI tools, but this just gives you one extra, more powerful tool in your toolbox. Let me show you another example. Here's one I did a background replacement on using the new portrait background replacement tool. If you want to learn more about that tool, there's a link to video tutorial below. So I'm going to duplicate the layer again. This is the background layer. And I'm going to change it to multiply one more time. And now you can see that it's darkened the background. Really quick and easy. Let me show you another example on a landscape image. This time when I duplicate the layer, I'm going to do something different to the sky than the land. So I'll do it on multiple layers. I've already done some editing to this image. There's the before version and there's after. So you can see I've already darkened the sky quite a bit. Now let's duplicate the layer, change the blend mode to multiply one more time because I want to darken. Wow, look what it's done to the sky. But of course the landscape is too dark. So I'm going to go into masking once again and do mask AI, let it do its thing to analyze the image. And can you guess what I'm gonna select this time? As a side note, while it's processing, if you haven't already got Luminar Neo, use my discount code DPM-NEO to get a small discount. You'll find the discount code and a link in the video description below. Did you guess right? I'm going to use sky. Now the selection of the sky isn't perfect, but it's good enough for this purpose. So I'm gonna go with it. See, there's a little bit of a halo around the edge here. I could go in and do some brushwork just to clean that up. Let me do that and I'll continue with the video in a moment. That's better. Now I'm just going to dial it down a little bit because it's too strong. Something around 70% opacity looks pretty good. Now that I've got it masked the way I want it, I'm gonna duplicate the layer again change the blend mode to screen and invert the mask. Now you can see that the mask is applied on the landscape. Let me turn off the mask and go back to properties. And you can see that the screen blend mode is lightening the landscape. You can also see that my masking wasn't perfect so I can go in and clean it up a bit further. But look at how quickly I did that with two duplicate layers. Let me hide the layers. There's the original image darkening the sky, and brightening the landscape. See how dramatic a change that is from the original image? So as I said, it's just one more great tool in your Luminar Neo arsenal. In this final quick example, I'm gonna duplicate her, and this time I'm gonna change the blend mode to soft light. 
Soft light adds contrast. That's a little bit too much contrast, but I can dial it down with the opacity. So what I'm looking to do is just add a little bit of punch and contrast to her. See how what a nice job that's doing? And of course, I could use the AI masking to mask it to just her and remove the effect from the background. This is the full before and after image. I teach how to do portrait retouching using Luminar Neo, among many other things, in my Luminar Neo The Complete course. If you'd like to take a preview of my course, you can look at two lessons for free. I'll provide a link for you to check that out in the description below. Watch this video now if you want more Luminar Neo tips and tricks. As always, thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button so you don't miss any new videos. Take care, until next time.